Hey everyone, what's going on? If you're new to this channel, in order to understand more of what I'm going to talk about in this video, you need to watch at least this video that I'll leave in the description because it's kind of a follow up video in regards to the information that I was talking about in that video. And what I talk about on this channel is, you know, patterns that are within your own life and in the mainstream media and signs and symbolism and what is also called synchronicity such as when you're you know you say a word and then the tv says the same word at the exact same time that's what synchronicity kind of is and i talk about all of that and how if you understand what is called gematria the practice of coding numbers into words and phrases, a lot of times them signs and symbolism and synchronicity seem to make a lot more sense. And if you follow it enough, you can figure out things, such as way back in December, I was watching the movie The Number 23, and I had this big synchronicity with the color pink, and it led me to think that pink was going to sing the national anthem of the Super Bowl. And then just over a month later, they announced that Pink was going to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. And, you know, there's much, much more. You can check out a ton of my other videos. It might seem complicated, but I'm telling you, if you just follow along for a little while, it will make a lot more sense. And the reason that I'm making this video is because the other night, I, Saturday night, I had like crazy, or it was actually last night. But it kind of began on Saturday night. But I had this just crazy synchronicity like the whole night. And what had happened was my nephew was in town and he was up at my parents' house and my mom had to work. And my dad has to work at like four in the morning. He has to get up. So I went up there and I brought my nephew over to my house so he could play. He wanted to play the Nintendo Wii U that I had. And. That way my dad could go to bed and my mom would just pick him up when she got off of work. So, anyway, his mom had called me, my sister, and they had a change of plans. And instead of doing whatever they're going to do, they were going to go see this movie called The Happy Time Murders. And my internet's not working with the crap, so that picture ain't going to work. But... She asked me if I'd heard of it, and she thought it was hilarious. She loves this Melissa McCarthy person in that movie, Tammy, which I don't really think is that good of a movie. But anyway, my sister was telling me about this movie, and she sent me a trailer to this movie so I could watch it because I'd never heard of it. And whatever, then she thanked me for getting her son and blah, 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 blah. And basically this movie is a, it's a movie with Muppets in it, but it's, it's a lot more for adults, you know, like this, the Muppet has sex with another Muppet, and then he shoots it all over, and whatever else, you know, it's not a movie for kids, and anyway, she so she watched that movie in the theater, and then she went home, and whatever, my mom got my nephew, and it was just me and my son Zamian that night, after Colin had left. And I decided to go to bed kind of early because I had to get up and watch Zamian when he woke up in the morning because I knew that Jasmine, my girlfriend, has been working overnights and she was going to want to sleep for a while. So I knew I was going to have to get up with him in the morning. So when I got up with him in the morning, I decided to find this movie just because my sister had told me about it. And I found it on Cody. It was actually pretty good quality, so I was sitting up with him, and I was watching this movie, but I was, I was still half asleep, you know, kind of tired, but moral of the story, I watched this movie, The Happy Time Murders, about these Muppets, right, and later in the day, Jasmine and Zamian left, and I went back to sleep for a while, and I didn't watch anything else on TV, and when they got home, I cooked supper. And I came out and we were like, Claire, our, our daughter Claire wanted to watch Troll Hunters on Netflix. And I'm so tired of watching that cartoon. We watch it like 24-7 and Jasmine feels the same way. So I was 
Jasmine was like, let's watch something else. And I just suggested Family Guy because it was another cartoon at least. And at least Family Guy, I actually don't hate Family Guy. And so Jasmine was like, all right. And she just turned on a random episode of Family Guy. And what's messed up about it is this episode was just so random. The episode, it's called Herbie the Love Sore. And it begins with a spoof about the Muppets and how they're on drugs and whatnot. Reminding me of that movie that I had watched just the night before, or just earlier that morning, right? The only two things I watch, the first two things I watch in the whole day involve Muppets and it's, you know, adult rated humor of Muppets. Like, I was like, what are the odds of that, you know? So, you know, it led me to look more into Melissa McCarthy and the Happy Time Murders. Because I knew there was something that I was supposed to figure out from the reason of this happening. And it might sound strange if you're new, but these things happen. And if you pay enough attention and you, you look more into it, you'll find, you know, more of what the, what the purpose of it is and why it is happening. So I, I just kept watching this Family Guy episode and... If you've been following my channel, I've been talking a lot about Cleveland and the Cleveland Indians possibly being in the World Series and how it's synced up to the curse of Rocky Colavito and also how the number 624 is connected in my own life in relation to all of this. And that's what Gematria, you know, it Gematria is used within Kabbalah that has a belief that God created the world by merging the letter with the number. But it also has the red string of Kabbalah. If you've ever watched the TV show called Touch, they talk about that, how there's the gods tied a red string around everyone's ankle, and, you know, you're all meant, you know, things are meant to touch at certain times. And basically that kid can see the patterns and the codes within the world and he stops bad things from happening because he can touch people at certain times to make it, you know, make good things happen instead of bad things happening, if that makes sense. So it truly is all interrelated, everything in this world. That is why the sports leagues are interrelated into the media. And that is why I am telling you the things that are going on in my own life are also interrelated into the sports leagues, and into the mainstream media. Everything is interrelated. So I just want to get that point across. You know, some people don't understand that in regards to gematria and, you know, what I am talking about on this channel. You know, it, it's not, there are people who understand this knowledge and who are using it to, you know, take advantage of the average person and to essentially play God over the rest of us, that is absolutely, absolutely positive, you know. But it doesn't take away from the fact that all of this works because everything is interrelated. So if you just think that only the Freemasons are doing all of this stuff, or, you know, or the Jews or whatever, that's not entirely the case. Yes, I agree that they are using this, but everything is truly interrelated. And, you know, we're not going to beat these people at controlling over us without understanding more about this knowledge and how it works and how we can use it to better the world. So that's why I talk about this on this channel, because it's something very essential and it's something that needs to be talked about. So. I know I'm going off on a rant here, but it's the truth. Like, people think I don't need to talk about my own life. I get that so many times, but it's absolutely interrelated into what is going on. And if you've followed my channel for, you know, even the past year, there are tons of things I wouldn't even have came up with if it wasn't for this synchronicity. You know, that's how I find a lot of these things. So... To say that it's not important, I disagree with you. So, and maybe, you know, or just to say that other people shouldn't be, you know, 
I shouldn't be doing this. I just have to disagree with you. That's all. So anyway, what was interesting about this episode? So it has the Muppet thing. And, you know, not too far off of that, Peter gets this whip in the mail. And he goes to Cleveland's house. And he's going to whip Cleveland or something. I can't remember what the whole point was. But he goes to Cleveland's house. And... What's even funnier about this is right after this scene with Cleveland, it goes to Brian the dog watching a Clint Eastwood movie where Clint Eastwood becomes blood brothers with these Indians, right? Cleveland and the Indians. And I've been talking about the Cleveland Indians like no other. So, it, you know, Clint Eastwood is really important to what I've been documenting as well. Clint Eastwood is in the, the bridges of Madison County, right? I believe that movie even came out on 8-1, and 81 is that big number with the bridge symbolism. But followed bridge symbolism all year, talked about a, you know, a major bridge collapse. Then we got that bridge collapse in Italy this year that was synced up to the Cleveland Indians. So, you know, just interesting. He's also, you know, Marty McFly in Back to the Future, says that his name's Clint Eastwood, and when he goes back to the Old West, you know, he, he starts off with the the Native American people getting chased by the cavalry, right? So, and <laughs> Back to the Future is interrelated. You know, it was super connected to the Cubs. Even when the Cubs lost in 2015, they lost on Back to the Future Day. And then the World Series began on October 27th, which was the same day that the Kansas City Royals won the World Series in 1985 on October 27th, which is the same day Marty McFly came back to the future, came back to 1985, was the day the Royals won the World Series. Then the Royals went on to win the World Series after when, when the Cubs were supposed to win it because of Back to the Future. Marty McFly even had KC Daylighters on his Toyota 4x4, so... Absolutely connected to what I've been talking about with the Cubs and the Indians and how something to this year is just related big time to when the Cubs and the Indians played each other in 2016. But basically the whole plot of this show is that Stewie wanted to become blood brothers with Brian and then Brian has herpes, so then Stewie got herpes. And, you know, that was just a major plot through the deal. It's just interesting that you use Cleveland and then the Indian scene just after that. Also, Clint Eastwood's 88 years old this year, right? And that was a big number with the Cubs. Curse of the Billy Goat equals 88. You know, that's why in the Steve Bartman incident, after that happened, the Marlins scored eight runs in the eighth inning to come back and whatnot. And, you know, Anthony Rizzo born on 8-8 eight, eight, and so on. Anyway, I looked up Melissa McCarthy after this, and oddly enough, the day that I decided to watch this film just so happens to be her birthday. August 26th, same day I just randomly watched this Melissa McCarthy film, just so happens to be her 48th birthday. And that's interesting because in regards to Cleveland, Cleveland equals 48, and they haven't won the World Series since the year 48. And 48 and 70 are also kind of mirrored years. 1970 was 48 years ago. And the Indians haven't won for 70 years. Indians equal 70 in Gematria. So she was born in 70 and just turned 48. You see what I'm talking about? Her name in Gematria also is 169. Just like Rocky Colavito, who the Indians are cursed by. So the big piece that I noticed with her, when I look at Melissa McCarthy up, she's really famous for this TV show called Mike and Molly, which I've heard of, but I've never really got into it or watched any episodes. I watched maybe a few pieces of it, but I've never really watched it. But if you go back and watch this video where I talk about the pink symbolism, a big thing in regards to it was all about Molly, talked about Pretty in Pink, and that stars Molly Ringwald. And then I was just talking about 
how Molly Tibbetts was, when she went missing, wearing a pink shirt. And they also, some cop thought she was missing back in November, thought she was a 10-year-old missing girl because of her pink coat and pink hat or whatever, right? So there was this Molly symbolism. Even in this video, I mentioned how possibly it was something to do with Leonard Skinner and Molly Hatchet, right? And then we got the death of Ed King, the guy from Leonard Skinner, just, what, a couple days after making this video or whatever? And, you know, just interesting. And they're from Jacksonville. And think about the Jacksonville stupid shooting that we just recently got. I also recently just talked about Jonathan Davis's wife dying from corn. I think it might have been in, it was in one of these newer videos. Talked about Jonathan Davis's, I think it was this one, the guy from corn. And way back when, when I, what I was talking about in this video was back in January, I had some synchronicity with the band corn and the theme of blind. And I thought it was interesting because the day before, I documented about Limp Biscuit randomly, the band Limp Biscuit, who is from Jacksonville, you know. So if I would have paid a little bit more attention to to that, possibly I would have known that we were gonna get something big in Jacksonville, you know. So But just wanted to point it out. I talked about this Molly symbolism in this video. I even had some synchronicity with ghosts with my friend Sam and when I looked up the movie Ghost with Demi Moore in it and his name's Sam Moores, when you look up that movie, Demi Moore's character in the movie is named Molly and her husband, Patrick Swayze's character, is named Sam, right? So there's a Moores thing that was connected to a Molly thing. Now check this out. Mike and Molly here. Melissa McCarthy plays Molly on the show and it's set in Chicago which is interesting with the Chicago Cubs Cleveland Indian stuff also when you look up the show there was this I wish my internet would work better but I'm using the hotspot on my phone right now because the awesome internet decided to quit working right before I started to make this video but when you look up, up the, the controversies on this show it talks about in season three Molly's new shoes, there's a joke that they do that's about uh, drunk Indians in Arizona. So, you know, what are the odds? It's something to do with, there, there's controversy with a Native American thing going on in this. And it's interesting in regards to the Diamondbacks, too, in Arizona. You know, they were the team who won just after 9-11 on 11-4. This is the 114th World Series. And then we just had John McCain die from Arizona, right? Arizona equals 48, just like Cleveland. You know, there's, there's a lot of parallels to Arizona, but in 2016, a big piece to why I thought the Indians would play the Cubs in the World Series, it was connected to this Native American theme in my own life synced up to the town I live in and a town about 20 minutes away. And the only two movies that I went to see in the theater were the one, the Allegiant movie that was about Chicago. And then I went to this movie called The Darkness that was all about going to the Grand Canyon and this kid steals the Anasazi rocks. And then it brings this, these Native American demons into their home. So the only two movies I talk, watched all year were about Chicago and Indians, right? And then the Indians and the Cubs were in the World Series. So that's what I think the Arizona piece is about, you know, showing me something with the Indians again. But it wouldn't surprise me if the Diamondbacks or something made the World Series. You know, I'm just trying to follow this puzzle and piece it together. That episode was also the 63rd episode, which is super fitting because Native American equals 63 in Jamashia. There was also some controversy with this TV show because on the season finale of the third season, 
There was an episode titled Windy City, and it was supposed to air on May 20th, and it had a tornado descending on Chicago. But they pulled the broadcast because that same day, the same it was the same day as the 2013 Moore tornado that happened in Moore, Oklahoma, right? So they pulled this ep they pulled this episode because it showed a tornado in Chicago, and it happened to fall on the the same day as the Moore tornado. And think about that, Mike and Molly. And think about how Moore was interrelated with that. And when you go look up this tornado, and you look up Moore, Oklahoma, would you believe that Moore, Oklahoma is in Cleveland County, Oklahoma? What are the odds of that? It's in Cleveland County, Oklahoma. Once again, connecting to what I am talking about. They even go on to tell you that it followed a roughly simil similar track to the deadlier 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado. You know, just interesting. Bridge Creek, once again, some other big thing I'm talking about that's interrelated with all these. Bridge Creek. There's, so there's a lot of interesting numbers with this. It says it formed at 2.56 p.m. Curse of Rocky Colavito equals 256. This 333 is also interesting. Documented a lot about 333 in regards to Pope Francis and also the Philadelphia Eagles and whatnot. And the, the Eagles just winning the Super Bowl. And, you know, this happened in 2013, the same year that Pope Francis became the Pope on 31313. That episode, and when you look up that episode about the tornado, it was also the 70th episode. Remember, Indians equals 70. They haven't won, and it will be 70 years this year if they make the World Series. I mean, they haven't won in 70 years if they make the World Series. This show also just so happened to air 127 episodes. In 2016, I was talking about how this was the, the it number for the Indians. 127. We even got the story about the girl from the Allegiant movie being arrested at the Dakota Access Pipeline and she got was one of 127 people being arrested, right? And then North Dakota was celebrated its 127th anniversary of being a state on Game 7 of that day of the World Series. And North Dakota equals 127 in Jabatria. If you notice, we just got a story about Kyrie Irving, the Cleveland, former Cleveland Cavalier who went to Boston. He was at, got honored at Standing Rock too. So they're bringing back that Indian theme. And the Indians beat the Red Sox to make the 1948 World Series to go on to beat the Boston Braves. So, you know, tons of other things. The, the Babe Ruth died in 1948, just before the Indians last won the World Series. And the Red Sox are, were cursed by Babe Ruth, by the curse of Bambino. Which, I bring that up because, look, the 126th episode of this show that aired on the same day as the very last episode it just sounds to be called the Curse of the Bambino. What are the odds of that? That one was also Season 6, Episode 12, which has been an interesting number. You know, the Stoneman Douglas stuff was all about 612. All these shootings in Florida are all connected to the number 612. That's the day Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un, June 12th. And it's the 114th World Series. World War equals 114, Holocaust 114, Pearl Harbor 114. I think that's why Hawaii has been so big in the mainstream media lately. And the curse of the Bambino stems back to 1918. And 1918 was the year that World War I came to an end, but it was also the year that the Red Sox beat the Cubs 
in the World Series, and Game 1 of that World Series was when it became popular to stand during the National Anthem at sporting events. And Grover Cleveland Alexander was also on that team for the Cubs, and he died on November 4th, a lot like 114. So anyway, I went, I went and watched these two episodes, and it's all about her not being able to get pregnant, so they're going to adopt a kid, and they don't know if they're going to get the kid, and in the Curse of the Bambino episode, they do a bunch of ritual things, you know, they go to see a psychic and whatever else, and she actually gets down and prays to God, because she really wants to adopt this child, and she makes a joke about, like, you know, I know, I know we've had our differences before, but, you know, like, diseases and whatever. And then she goes, and, and I mean, come on, the Cubs, right? And she's talking about the Cubs not winning for 108 years. This episode came out in 2016, the year that the Cubs went on to win the World Series and broke the curse of the Billy Goat. So, just interesting. They call it Curse of the Bambino. And the, for the life of me, I never really saw any connection to that in the episode. There wasn't really anything to do with baseball, so interesting. The Cubs break their curse in the same year this episode comes out. So, she's also a fat comedian, right? A fat comedian. The other guy who plays Mike, he's also a fat comedian. And there's some other weird thing that happened the other day. So I got this message. I was writing a post about Kyrie Irving, actually, and his sister's named Asia. And I just got done writing a post about the Asia Argento person. And right as I was uploading the video for that, this random person commented and wanted to send me some information about the Molly Tibbetts thing. And I noticed her name looked like Asia. And, you know, she's wearing a shirt that looks like the Boston Celtics. But maybe that's not how you pronounce it, Asia. But anyway, I, I gave this person my email address. And what's well, so it's an obvious girl. But when you, when I got the email, the email is from Ralph Emerson. And I thought, you know, I don't know, possibly... There's a reason for that. It seems like a pretty legit person. And I just, maybe it's from like Ralph Waldo Emerson, you know, something to do with that. I don't know for sure, but just interesting. It, it's this person, it's an obvious girl, and then I get a message from Ralph Emerson. And then the next day I got a video, someone commented 8675309 on my Ralphie May video. and. I mean, if you don't know, I talked about this pattern with fat comedians and how I thought Ralphie May would possibly die within the next year. And then Ralphie May did die within the next year because he was all synced up by the same code. And he died exactly in connection to the day that I put my video out about fat comedians. Even. Uh, one month and 24 days away. And that was the big number with fat comedians. 124, can't even remember it all. John Belushi died on January 24th. Chris Farley's name equals 124. and Can't remember it. Can't even remember it all. Sam Kennison died like one month and 24 days before his birthday, and his name equals 124. So, I just have a feeling there's something I'm supposed to see with that. Two fat comedians. We just had Roseanne get... I saw an article about how John Goodman was sad because he didn't, I don't know if he spoiled it or not, but what I got out of the article is they're going to kill Roseanne's character off for that new show, The Connors. So they kind of kill the fat comedian, you know what I mean? So just interesting, but Ralph in Gematria equals the same as Melissa McCarthy and also Rocky Colavito. And... Family Guy that had that Muppets thing in the beginning. Family Guy has that big number synced up to Fat Comedians. Family Guy equals 124. So, 
I don't know. Had some synchronicity with Family Guy and Ralph Cramden a while back from the TV show The Honeymooners as well. He's the original Fred Flintstone, and then John Goodman was Fred Flintstone. Or he's... Ralph Cramden is... Can you think of the guy's name, but... <coughs> Sorry, the guy who plays Ralph Cramden on The Honeymooners, he's the inspiration... Jackie Gleason, but Je Ralph Cramden is the inspiration for Fred Flintstone. And then John Goodman actually plays Fred Flintstone in the movie The Flintstones. Ralphie Mae was also connected to, big time to the Houston Astros being in the World Series. He died in Las Vegas just after the Las Vegas shooting, where the guy from The Price is Right called me the day, or reached out to me the day before the Vegas shooting, and he is from Las Vegas, right? And then, I don't know what happened to him, so, never responded to my email, which just seems a little strange to me. You know, you reach out to me like crazy, and then you, when I send you an email, you tell me you're going to get back to me because you're out of town, and then you never do. It just seems a little fishy, you know. Why would you, if I reached out to somebody that bad, you know, and they responded, I think I would want to get a hold of them. I don't know. just seems weird to me. Also, in regards to McCarthy... The coach of the Boston Red Sox the year that the Indians beat them in the one-game playoff series to go on and beat the Boston Braves in the World Series. The coach was named Joe McCarthy. You know, so he won a bunch of World Series with the, with the New York Yankees, though, when he was the coach. So, and New York equals 78, just like Cleveland. And he also died in the year 78. You know, so he quit coaching in 1950 when Grover Cleveland Alexander died on 11 slash 4 just after the Yankees won the World Series. So, I don't know. I still think it's for the Indians, but there's a lot of interesting parallels that go along with it. Also, this guy who plays Mike on the show, Billy, Billy Gardell. What I thought was interesting about him, when you look up his movies and whatnot, he's in, according to Wikipedia, this is the only episode he's in on Young Sheldon, but I know that he's on more than this. But the one that they list just so happens to be the one where Sheldon starts the religion of binary and he's, he sees the numbers 1 and 0 in his dream. And he says, are you the Ten Commandments? And they say, no, we're binary. You know, we make up the universe, ones and zeros. But in Gematria, God equals 10, and Satan equals 10, right? So, it's just interesting thinking about that in regards to binary, the universe being binary, and then God equals a, a 1 and a 0, and Satan equals a 1 and a 0. So, hopefully all this makes sense. There's definitely something going on. I don't know, I haven't pieced it all together. But there's a connection between Molly and Moore. And I don't know if there's going to be... I've been saying how possibly there's going to be an earthquake at the time of the World Series this year. Maybe it's going to be a tornado or something weird. Or maybe nothing. Maybe maybe there's just going to be some type of, you know, said natural disaster going on. Or maybe we're going to get the death of one of these fat comedians or... Another fat comedian? Need to, to think about it. Think about some other fat comedians. Maybe it's going to be one of these people. You know? And when the fat comedians die, most people just dismiss it because they're fat. And they go, oh, they had a heart attack because they're fat. You know, but they always die by this code, so. Let's see. Anyway, let's let's look at one last thing that happened on this on last night. So, I, I wrote a, a bunch of this stuff, and I made this blog post, and I can't remember. I was up here. I was upstairs, and I came back downstairs, and I noticed my girlfriend and my daughter were, were both sleeping down there, and 
the Cleveland show was turned on. And I thought, interesting, you know, that they're watching the Cleveland show again. And, I don't know, I started thinking about his name being Cleveland Brown. And I thought, I wonder if the Cleveland Browns have any connection to what I'm talking about following this, you know, Cleveland Indians, Rocky Colavito thing. I wonder if there's some type of connection to the Cleveland Browns. And Cleveland Browns just saw have an equal 169, just like Rocky Colavito. They also equal 61, like Rocky Colavito. And they also equal 1960 in Jewish, which was the year Rocky Colavito got traded away from the Cleveland Indians. So, I mean, it's like, you know, what are the odds? And what's even better is the episode that was on when I came down here was an episode of this guy Lester striking out Cleveland in a baseball game. It was called How Cleveland Got His Groove Back. What are the odds it even involves a baseball game? And it involves a guy named Lester who's pitching, which reminds me of the Chicago Cubs and John Lester, right? And he also played for the Red Sox, though, in 2007 and 2013 when they won the World Series. So, once again, that connection to all three of these teams that I keep talking about. Interesting, this, this episode, it came out on 10-10 of 10, too. You know, 10-10 of the year 10. Trying to, I'm gonna. I'll talk about this in a different video, maybe. But a 24 number, 24th episode is interesting. After the Jacksonville thing, but in this episode, what happens is he he's trying to get his groove back, and he wants to go back to Africa, but then they end up going to just Hawaii, and lying to their kid or whatever that, and telling him that Hawaii was actually Africa, and he didn't know the difference, but. It just makes me think about, you know, Hawaii and the relationship that's been going on with, you know, all the things going on. Hawaii just had the hurricane lane, and somebody pointed out to me that, oh, what's his, I can't even think of the guy's name. The the coach that traded away Rocky Caldebito, his name was Lane, you know, so just interesting. And... The Browns also hold the record of 0-16 with the Detroit Lions. And it just, you know, Rocky Colavito got traded away to the Detroit Detroit Tigers and whatnot. Also, the last game that the Browns played was the preseason game against the Eagles which just stuck out to me because the Eagles won the, the the NFL championship game in 1960, the year that Rocky Colavito was traded. So how interesting, you know, the Eagles just won, and then they won the year that Rocky Colavito was traded as well, 1960. They also won in 1948, the year that the Indians won the World Series. The Cleveland, the Eagles did. Sorry, my battery died, but the Eagles won in 1948, just after the Indians won, and then the Browns won in 1950, which is interesting considering the score was 5-0, to zero, which is a really odd football score, 5-0. to zero. You know, it's pretty strange. But it is also interesting with that Grover Cleveland Alexander dying in 1950, and that's also when the McCarthy coach of the Red Sox quit coaching, really, 1950. Also, in regards to the Browns, Elvis was a fan of the Browns. I was just thinking about that in regards to Aretha Franklin dying on the same day as Elvis and Babe Ruth. And... You know, Aretha Franklin, Elvis was supposedly a friend of Bobby Franklin, it says in there. And it had me thinking of Elvis in Hawaii that aired on 114, a lot like 114. The year that the, what was it, the Miami Dolphins won. Elvis also died seven months and eight days after his birthday. Cleveland equals 78. We also had Jerry, the King Lawyer's son. Lawler, how do you say it? His son, the re the wrestler. 
He died earlier this year. And, you know, Jerry the King is a fan of the Cleveland Browns. Elvis also is from Memphis, which is interesting because Memphis is where Russwood Park burnt down. And, you know, that was on Easter Sunday, the same day Rocky Colavito got traded away in 1960. And you remember the Holy Fire was all about that. A Holy Fire is a fire that happens around Easter. And then we got that Holy Fire that happened in Cleveland National Forest. So, just interesting that Russwood Park is in Memphis, and it's even famous for a non-sporting event of Elvis performing on July 4th, 1956. Also, the owner of the Cleveland Browns is Jimmy Haslam, and I noticed he also owns the, or is the CEO of the Pilot J, Pilot Flying J Truck Stops or whatever. And remember, in regards to the flag stuff, remember all over Facebook, there was a guy who said that the fly, he's not going to go f flying J's anymore because they took down their flag or whatever. There was a, a big flag controversy with the, the flying J's and whatnot. And that guy's name was Dave Moore, who started that controversy. But it's interesting that pilot flying J equals 169, just like Cleveland Browns. So this guy owns the Cleveland Browns, and he's the CEO of Pilot Flying J, that both equal the same thing in Gematria. Just like Rocky Colavito. It also changed to Pilot Flying J, the name of it, on 7-1 of 2010, which is interesting because this year, 7-1 is 114 days for the 114th World Series. So, I don't know. Just I thought it was interesting how the Cleveland Browns had a big connection to Rocky Colavito. And then I randomly, the reason I even thought of any of it was because I came downstairs and the Cleveland show was on. And his name's Cleveland Brown. Should look up where he lives. I don't think it's in Cleveland. But the guy Lester strikes him out, right? And it's about Cleveland got his groove back. Which makes me think about the Indians getting their groove back and coming back and winning the World Series or something. You know? Possibly nothing, you know. But... So, we'll leave the video there. Like I said, I just wanted to show all these odd connections, these patterns, these symbols and signs. They happen to me every day, all day long. It's unbelievable, but... If you understand Jabatria, you can see a little bit more of what's going on. I just, I don't know. That Ralphie May thing with the fat comedians. I just w wonder if we're going to get a death of a fat comedian sometime, you know, that's connected to the World Series or, or maybe the Super Bowl. We'll see what's going on with it. Have a good one. Peace.